Okay, final try. Let's see if this works. Position myself back there. Let's pick string cast. I'm not really very proficient with doing string cast, but I wanted to demonstrate to everybody what the Jack, and that is audio's interconnection of applications on Linux works, and what it looks like and how it works, and in a very basic down to earth way. My reason for doing this is I would like to um, start soon a long put off podcast. I would like to start um, audio, not video. And I would like this to be able to record it live with minimal edits, have people contribute from a mumble server, which is kind of like Skype for people who aren't uh, initiated, but it's open source and um, works on every single platform, iOS, um, Android, Windows, Macintosh and Linux, and it's not owned by Microsoft. And also it works on low bandwidth, bandwidth um, networks, um, which is great for me because I have low bandwidth. But anyway, here is the general application. This is one interface for seeing how applications are interconnected. And I've already got it started up here. And uh, here is my basic studio. Let's just zoom just a bit. So you can see you've got my room, which I've created. And you've got my hardware inputs, which is my microphone. And the playback, which are my speakers. Very simple. And I've got a, a studio room here. And currently, I just have playback. Let's just see if there are any other room to fit. Here you can see I've got capture and playback. But along here on the left hand side in this in this window, you can see I've got I've created various applications. And you do that via application. You click on new application and right now you need to know what the actual audio jack enabled application is. For example, Mumble or some audio player or Ardour, which records everything in separate tracks. I've got all those set up right now, but they're not enabled, which is why you can't see them on this screen. And all I need to do to enable them is double click on them. So first off, let's enable uh, Mumble. So I double click on Mumble, you see a window appear, and now it asks me to log into my Mumble. So I click Connect, and it should, I think I clicked it on Connect, and it should log me in there. I hope this works. Just reset it back a bit. I think I might have not clicked on connect and I clicked on cancel. Yeah, I did. There we go. So now I'm on mumble and there's one person and I think he was asleep early. Anyway, I'll resize that, move it out of the way. But the important thing is you can see here it appears on the on the window. So zoom out here a bit. And you've got an input and an output. So the output from mumble would be anything that anyone else says. So you can click and you can connect that by just click clicking there and you can put a wire. I've already got wires, so I'm not going to do that again. But you can see I've already put the wires down to my left and right of my speakers so I can hear people. And also you could you can connect the input to there. So now if I wanted to go back to mumble, you could now I could press the speak to activate. Hello, hello, can anyone hear me? Hello. But I think Jay Musa is actually asleep or not there right now. What I want to do, I want to show you how there are some more applications plugged in. So I'm going to enable, I've got this jack rack, and this has, you can add many, many effects on here to modify your voice. But as you can see, I have basically, right now I'm still in the process of learning this, but I've basically plugged in my capture device, which is my microphone, into the jack rack, and then it goes through the various filters, which you can add here in the program, and then it goes into the mumble input. So that way you can modify. I actually used a um, sound gate, I think it's called, so that uh, if there are any noises in my in my room, um, say children are speaking, it doesn't come through on the microphone or it doesn't activate it and go through to the recording. Um, only when I speak up close to it. But I'm still learning how these things work. You can also add special effects or you can add um, equalizers in here. So that's one thing. Um, another one, I want to play audio effects and plug them into Mumble. So I um, installed here Alsa Player. So I double click on there and activate it. And as you see, I've already got all the interconnections wired up. So as I activate the program in this project, they automatically get interconnected how they were last time. And you can save the project so it's that's how you want to look last time. And here we go, we've got our supplier, the application. I think you click one of these buttons and and you'll see playlists. Or maybe I've just got to stretch it a little bit. There we go. 
so we could play Sonic Gear into the audio. And it probably won't appear, I haven't got the audio from this whole application going back into my recording, so you won't be able to hear that. But basically, you can see the output from the ALSA player goes into the mumble input. So that anyone else connected to mumble can hear it, as well as, of course, my microphone, so they can hear me when I speak. And also, the ALSA player output goes to my speakers, so I can hear it when it's playing as well. So that's that. And then, of course, in this application itself, you can fast forward and slow down, speed up, all sorts of things. You can add stuff to a playlist, so you can listen to all of that. So that's that application. But what about um, vo uh, levels? You want to see the levels from the different inputs. Well, I have uh, put meter bridge here. We'll just activate that. And you should see a nice levels there. So if I bring over my other microphone and I just speak into that, you can see the voice microphone. And if I go over to the ALSA player, and which one is it down here? Just put it alongside so you can see. If I start playing that audio, you can see it's in this window. You can't hear this because it's not plugged back in, but it's actually Bayer Brown doing his part of Disco Watch this week. So I'll stop that for a minute. And um, this middle one here is mumble, but unfortunately, I can't wake anyone up on mumble right now. But now you might be asking, so just have a quick look at these connections. You can see I've got my capture going into the first meter. Then you've got from Jackrack the output being processed by the Jackrack filter program going into the second dial. The third dial comes out for mumble output into there. And then I think the third one is the ALSA ALSA player, which are my sound clips and stuff like that. But now, what about um, recording all of this into a podcast? So, we have our door. I'll just activate that over here. Double click it. It launches. All the configurations are saved. And uh, I'm not yet so skilled with our door. We won't actually play with the program today. But I just want to show you what it looks like. Let's just zoom, click to zoom, so you can see that. Well, that's added this whole mumble of extra interconnections. These interconnections we can ignore for the time being. This is just so that we can also add um, jamming. We'll enable that as well. Jamming to the top. Oh, well maybe we don't need to connect that for the time being. It doesn't actually look like I've connected it. No problem. But you can see basically here we've got the output from Jackarack. Now additionally goes in to the mic to into the into the microphone. So in one channel on this outdoor application, my microphone will be whatever I say will be recorded. And then we have another one here, which is mumble. Everything that's on mumble will be recorded. Let's zoom in a little bit. So you can see mumble. We got inputs from Mumble, so anything anyone else says and um, contributing to the podcast will be recorded in its, its own channel, in its own chat on inside the Ardor recorder. And Ardor is a bit like Audacity, if you haven't if you haven't played with Ardor, um, a bit like it, but also a bit different. And uh, I don't know enough in order <laughs> to explain it all. I'm hoping to learn now gradually. And then of course we've got another channel for the music, which I insert in there. And then we've got the final mix and stuff like that. Of course, you could add uh, the Internet DJ console to this whole setup so that you can easily um, stream the whole stuff live to um, Icecast or one of the other streaming services. Um, but I don't have much of an upload bandwidth, only 60 to 80k upload. So um, I'm not really going to be doing that myself. Maybe someone else, this is part of the reason for doing this video, is to encourage other people who might contribute to my podcasting or other podcasts to use this. Um, and I think the more people we get to actually use this and learn how it works, the more feedback, the more exposure the whole Jack thing can get to non, non serious uh, musicians. I think there's a lot of serious people who are really um, using this now, but uh, I'd love to see it hit more the mainstream. And there is a wonderful, um, there is a wonderful website that's come up um, recently in the last six months or so. So much information, and it's basically where I learned 
and studied how to do this and it, uh, I was a bit stupid to be honest I didn't quite know how to do it but it's called penguinproducer.com it's a great guy and who also has appeared on uh, linuxbasic.com uh, podcast and uh, helps out there a little bit really really intelligent and uh, well spoken and mostly he helps and has a lot of tips in how to set this up so and this isn't really a how-to, this is really a, a video of what it can look like and what my studio looks like right now as I'm learning the process. So I think that I'm going to wrap up here and that is all I'm going to say. And um, uh, hopefully this spaghetti of wires <laughs> isn't too confusing and this should be obvious. Let me just do one last zoom to fit so you can see the whole thing. This is how I have it set up right now. And this application for for editing it is really great. You can just move these things around and, uh, and modify the layout. And then whenever you want to create a new connection, you just click here, drag the cable over to somewhere else. Say, I want to put it over here or there, there, and let go. I don't want to make another connection and mess it up. And once you've got your studio all set up, you just go ahead and save. Um, another application which is quite handy here is uh, Cloudia. Let's just see if we can launch that. Cloudia. I'm running all of this on Ubuntu 12.04, um, but a respin modified uh, the Bodhi Linux, which I really love. So, so here you can basically choose your applications, and then it will integrate it back into the actual Gladish. So, this window here is Gladish. Um, that's where you manage all your interconnections and then you use this other program called um, Cloudia in order to pick all your audio applications so hopefully you can see here how many there are some stuff here for doing effects some tools in fact I need to look through here and add some more myself to enhance my studio so that's it thank you very much for listening and I hope that was informative and I hope this recorded. <laughs>